Here's the deal, this is what you're doing. You need to make sure that the white in the paper here is attached to the white of the paper out here, right? You are cutting out the black shapes, like shapes in um, anything, right? So here's an example, right? The hair was a black shape that is cut out as an individual shape so that the rest of the integrity of the paper holds together, okay? So if you look in the eyes here, even though these probably were all lines that were attached at some point, you detach them, okay? So that you can cut out the eyebrows as a shape and the basic eye as a shape, right? To then spray paint, right? I'm gonna show you another example in a second, okay? So when I'm going in here, I have to make decisions. For instance, now even though this white of the face is attached to the paper through here and here, it's only on the left side. So I wanted to make another bridge over here. And I want to be you know, strategic about where I put those bridges. So I draw it in there, right? So I've attached it through here as well as over here, right? Now in the eye, I'm gonna get rid of little black areas in here. This little shape right here is not attached to the paper out here, so I go through and I make a connection through there. That is creates a bridge from this paper to that paper. Same thing with this eye, there was lines there. I'm removing them with a little bit of the white, right? Creating a gap so that this part in the inside, the white of the eye is attached to the white of the face, right? And there's some little areas in here where I do that. And then also because you're gonna, you know, you have to cut these out, getting rid of like little, little details is a good idea. So simplify your forms, right? So here's another bridge that I created in here so that this line goes all the way through and attaches out here. Even though it's attached out here, doing that makes this stronger, okay? And that's what you're trying to do. You don't want this to fall apart when you're like moving it around, right? You want it to hold together. Really quick, quick let me just highlight and review what I mean about um, bridges and islands with regards to stencils. These are bridges, right? All these areas between the numbers that hold this part of the paper into this part. So when you are anywhere within a stencil, say the middle here, you have to be able to travel out through bridges. You don't wanna make this surrounded by cuts because then this part just falls out. So you lose the circle in the middle of the zero. So these are bridges, they're very important. That's what holds the stencil together and keeps its integrity. Because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to cut out pieces that you can remove from the paper without hurting the integrity of the rest of the page. So every, all of the paper in here, again, has to connect somehow out here. So we have to be able to come from this area, draw through bridges, up this way, down this way, out and out, going this way, out and out to the paper. The more areas that we have, the more directions that we can go uh, out into the paper, the stronger your stencil will be. But you also wanna think about artistically um, where this is at, where you're placing these things, which is actually one of the biggest artistic decisions you're making with this project, uh, for the stencil portion that is, um, is where you're gonna place these. So be strategic about it. When you get better at this, you'll be able to use the contours of lines and create interesting shapes um, in and of themselves. You can isolate areas and look at how can I make this look beautiful or interesting, right? So we have a line that kind of comes in through here, which would be like an eyelid coming in and out, coming through here. It looks like a break in the uh, eyelash, but it also creates an interesting shape as well. And again, we can cut these out and remove them as one single piece. This is exactly why we are thinking in positive and negative space. That's all we have is positive and negative space. The black and the white, the shadows and the highlights. How can we create images that define the, image, the, the stencil source that we're using while also giving us that structure that we need to hold the stencil together? When you're done doing that and you're sure that you've gotten all your bridges figured out, you are going to trace it onto the clear plastic paper. So when you're doing this, you are only following the black shapes. So when I'm coming across, if I start up here, I'm not gonna keep going past this point where it hits the white line. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go in this way. And I go around and I'm just tracing the black, right? And up here, obviously there's some like, you know, black, areas up there that I want to kind of be mindful of. So when I'm doing the eye on the inside, 
I'm not tracing where the lines used to be. I'm only tracing black. Imagine that the little white bridges you made are like just the paper and they never existed is in shape. So I can do a little bit of an edge there, but I don't want to do too much. I might not even use this eye uh, eyelid as part of it, but the eyebrow is a shape. So I'm tracing all of the shapes as they exist, not crossing bridges, all right? So when I do this side of the face, I come through and I go in down there, right? I don't connect those lines. Those two lines are separated. You gotta make sure when you're tracing it that you're doing that. Because you're gonna get confused when you're cutting. It's a very laborious uh, process. It's not easy to do. And you won't be thinking you'll just go all the way through. So you have to really make sure to get it right now. Okay, so now that I've finished tracing my image, paying close attention to the bridges and islands, that are created in my shape. I'm gonna remove this sheet from under it. So we see what I wanna do is I wanna cut out the black areas, the black shapes, which I've created um, using the bridges in mind, right? So we have that bridge. Notice how there's no lines that connect out here. This hat is one isolated shape. The eye is an isolated shape. The eyebrow is an isolated shape, right? Think of those as islands that we can cut out and remove from the image without ruining the integrity of the stencil holding together. So now we can start cutting. So I've got my cutting mat, got my X-Acto blade, and I'm ready to start cutting. So one of the things you wanna make sure to do when you're cutting is to always cut towards yourself. Um, different things that you're gonna use uh, as your stencil base, like Bristol board, uh, envelope paper, cardstock, um, or this like vellum uh, graphics paper, um, it's up to you, whatever you want to use. This stuff tends to be great for tracing and also uh, holds together pretty well um, after you've sprayed it a couple times. Um, but So the amount of pressure that you're going to want to push is going to depend on the surface that you're cutting through. Um, I don't actually need to push down very hard to cut through this, okay? And I hold it just like, kind of like I would a pencil, but make sure that you have uh, your index or your, your pointer finger has the pressure that kind of pushes down. The rest of your hand kind of does the control while that gives you um, the, the push down. And you want to make sure um, that you are pulling towards you when you are cutting um, so that you are always kind of in control. If I were to try to cut like this, I would have no control. Even to the side, I have far less control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition my stencil as I'm cutting to make sure um, that I can cut towards my body rather than away, right? And again, the better you get at this, um, the more abilities you're gonna have to kind of have some wiggle room there, but you wanna make sure that you are generally pulling towards you a little bit of turn away um, and it's very smooth. So we're gonna cut all around the lines that we created or the shapes that we've made in black um, with the uh, Sharpie marker from tracing onto our um, vellum here. And uh, I'm gonna pull this out, right? There's my shape, I can discard it. Um, and now if I were to spray this down, that image would show up on, on the page much like it does, for instance, with this one here. Um, I cut out the hair of Neil deGrasse Tyson here, and when I put it down, I spray, and when I remove it, I end up with a positive image um, on the surface. But let's like suggest here that I screwed up. Oops, I cut along this line that was supposed to be a bridge, right, right here. So now I have this, this cut right here. I screwed up, right? How do I fix when I screwed up? Tape. 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 Fixes everything, right? Um, yeah. So you just need little pieces, okay? And a little of this goes a really long way, so this would be even probably more than you want. If it's gonna be like a really delicate part in like an eye, then you need a, a smaller piece. But basically all you need to do is put that down over the area, Ooh. and then you just cut out the edges. So you, you remove part of the tape, right? So you cut back into the piece that you had, 
and you're just removing those pieces of tape. And then you have, voila, it is fixed. So I have my bridge back. And once you spray this once, it's gonna seal it and it's not gonna like peel up very easily. So it'll be fixed for good. So you're gonna do a test spray. Have my stencil, it's ready. See, it's not, it has like things that hang, but that's okay. Uh, the more times you spray this, it'll get a little bit stronger. Eventually you'll spray it so much that it'll get so caked over you can't use it anymore. But what you're gonna do is, your first spray is gonna be a test spray on a white sheet of paper. Before you spray on your collage, do a test. Um, you can still make changes after you do this. Um, and what we're using here is water-based spray paint that can be used inside. This is from, this is from a famous uh, uh, company called Montana. They make a lot of uh, spray paint cans. They came out with a water-based one. I'm just gonna spray black to start, but this is some of the assortment of colors that you're gonna get. So you wanna give it a couple shakes. Um, sometimes it is, whoop, the cap went flying with it. See how that happened when you opened it up? When you're putting caps on, do not put the caps with the nozzle pointed at your face. Please don't do that. You will spray yourself in the face, right? <laughs> Keep the nozzle away from your face when you are putting on caps and you nozzle it like that, you just kind of twist it on. Don't push too hard, because once you push down, it's gonna go in all the way, right? You might want to do a couple of test sprays, you know, because a lot of times in the beginning of a spray can, it's just like water coming out, but this is like ready to go pretty much. So you shake and you spray. So, I'm gonna spray straight down. Sometimes it's a good idea, because your spray can like, it's like blowing at it, can move your stencil around. It's a good idea to put weights down. Sometimes I use just other cans that are around, okay? So when you spray, the trick is you don't want to spray in one spot too long. You want to keep it moving, right? The reason is when you spray in one spot too long, it, it'll it like become like a little bit of a puddle and it'll drip, okay? So it'll bleed around your edges. And you don't even need to spray like too much. Sometimes you can have fun and you can do a little mist of another color. If I just tap it a little bit, a little bit of that. Wes wants me to try some blue as well. Yeah. And you'll see what it looks like when I peel this off. The other thing you want to have is another sheet of paper to then rest your stencil on. So when I peel this off, I'm going to put it on this other sheet because this is wet and you want it to dry as quickly as possible and dry flat. Ooh. Ooh. Magic. All right. So that is how you spray.